Shall I start now? Hello? Yes, please start. Thank you for the introduction, Adi Kemi and Ribukun. And hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I will be giving a speech on uh, the metaverse and how we Africans can leverage the positive uh, use of this technology and also uh, what are like the uh, the criteria, the tools and also uh, the requirements to uh, this big opportunity as an African. Recording in progress. <clears throat> so let me jump into uh, my quick presentation. Uh, I'm trying to show you uh, what we've been doing for the past three years and also uh, how we are uh, engaged in the immersive technologies in general. Uh, I think I don't have permission to share my screen. Let me get that and... Uh, just a minute, then I'll we'll sort that out. Okay. So uh, just to use the time, uh, Guzo Technologies is a startup, like uh, previously introduced as the startup company established around 2019. Uh, it's uh, headquartered in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Uh, so we are from the east. Uh, we specialize in uh, developing this immersive experiences, especially focusing on tourism uh, uh, sector. So I hope you can see my slides, right? Yes, we can. Thank you, Judy. Uh, so, who we are, uh, like I said, uh, we specialize in the Internet of Things, extended reality products, prototyping. Uh, this is like the general term, but I will go deep down. Uh, what's the mission behind this company is to become the leading technology solutions uh, to build interactive immersive experiences, especially for enterprises. As of now, uh, this immersive technology is not that much uh, a big uh, surprise for the consumer end. Uh, we are still on the mobile technology and our main focus is to, uh, to target the enterprise sectors. So you can say business to business uh, model is uh, used in our company. So why we started the company and what was like the the pain points uh, i mean i can take a few examples from my personal experience because this is the most important thing as an african it's all about impact so whenever we come up with technologies whenever we uh, target to uh, implement any emerging technology to our lives we have to see what's missing so if you remember this image uh, it was taken uh, a few years back, if you remember about the terrorist attacks, it happened in Syria. So these artifacts were like, they aged around 2000 years. So they just wiped off from the earth. 
they are also UNESCO inscribed, some of them are UNESCO inscribed sites. Uh, but due to different politics and different natural disasters, we are uh, losing our heritage, which means our history, our background. If you come to Africa, it, it, it means a lot because tourism is the biggest sector in Africa. That's how we get visitors from abroad. And the second uh, big thing about uh, this area or this sector in general is we have a rich history. And if you see like all over the place, all over the, con uh, the, the countries around the continent, each and every country has its own uh, history. So how do we keep this history and how do we manage to give it to the next generation because if we are like not uh, helping the sector with the technology it, it will be like uh, like Syria and we will lose all of our heritages or it has this uh, negative impact so uh, that was like the initial idea um, why we started uh, this VR so that we want to uh, use the concepts of like photogrammetry to scan different statues, historical heritage sites, uh, different uh, uh, museum artifacts. So those kind of things will, will needs to be like digitally kept so, so that any developer could use them for any experiences. Researchers can use it for uh, different studies. So that was like the first uh, initial idea and uh, yeah, we, we are still working on this uh, digitalizing artifacts and historical heritage sites. So eventually you can use it for virtual reality experiences, games, or it could be uh, given, uh, put and placed in different airports, park for visitors to see it virtually. So that was the whole point. And if you come to the concept of uh, inclusiveness, uh, most, most of the time we see uh, this places if we are physically fit or if you are uh, if you can just go by yourself maybe you have to physically travel and visit this kind of places but if you uh, want to get more traction to this kind of sites we have to have the digital version of uh, our uh, tourist attraction sites and also cultures so that people will be interested to come and visit our countries and especially for Africa targeting foreign currency this is one way of solving the biggest problem because we started as of ethiopia and ethiopia it's a bit hard to get uh, this foreign currency so we are targeting airports we are targeting different parks uh, so that they will be uh, getting or they will be a place to attract more visitors especially from transits so why now i mean why do we stick to this vr why do we focus on uh, this concepts like the immersive thinking. Uh, I always take this uh, as an example, Tim Sweeney, if you know him, it's, he's the founder of Epic Games. Uh, so if, if I hope you know about Minecraft game and they enabled around 70 million people to become a content creators, which means you will just go and create your own map and play the games. So in future, his predicting, I mean, his prediction is not something out of the blue. These guys are behind the biggest tools uh, or they are behind the biggest game engine so they know each and every uh, move especially in the metaverse aspect because if you keep looking on their posters if you keep uh, tracking their activities uh, most of the things that they were suggesting or they see is becoming true so uh, this VR AR thing will be accessible and it will target or there will be hundreds of millions of creators so as an africa what's our number so we have to have at least let's say half of it should be africans uh, considering the, the the use the number of use the talents uh, so we have to uh, get into this kind of thinking so i i think uh, i don't want to take too much time but some of our achievements is uh, we won an ep mega grants uh, last I think it's around one year and a half and uh, it was really powerful uh, because it, it enables us to fuel up most of our projects and we also won uh, 
uh, an award. There is a Joatacon festival that happens in in Ethiopia. It, it, it supports the gaming ecosystem and all this VR stuff. And we won that as a best futuristic XR of the year. And we are also nominated uh, on Laval Virtual uh, last year on VR AR for a cause category. So having this kind of good uh, publication or I mean publicity in the uh, sector as an African will empower the other African developers, creators uh, that has this uh, interest to, towards the technology. So let me share like few projects. I mean, these are like some of the new projects that we are about to release. Uh, .xr. It's a space exploration project. Uh, we are uh, like we are not releasing it like publicly because uh, it's, uh, we are working with our partners, and uh, it has some process. But I'm trying to share a few things about it. Uh, basically, it gives you uh, the sense of um, flying a spaceship and you will be part of uh, the rocket, uh, the spaceship, which is you will be uh, entering the spaceship. It's like a progressive video and it will launch. I mean, it will take off and you will be out of Earth and you can see Earth from the outside. You can um, see the space and there is a narrator uh, which gives you uh, some uh, technical uh, introduction about space and all everything. So. Why not we make uh, space exploration or travel in VR and teach them about a few basics uh, about the whole idea of space exploration and they will return back to the Earth. So especially for different events, it's a good way of marketing and promotion. And there is a space exploration facility in Ethiopia. So we, we are placing there and one of our best project which was nominated even for Laval Virtual was the story behind Adwa. Uh, let, just to save time, I'm not playing the uh, the trailer, but you can uh, still get it in our YouTube channel. So this will tell immersive storytelling experience. So we designed uh, a virtual uh, place. Adwa is a, a battle place. So it's around, uh, it's located around the northern part of Ethiopia. So we get the height map data of this place. It's around 300 kilometers square. And we converted that data into mountains and all the landscape. So that what you see in VR is what is actually uh, seen in the physical or in, in the real world or in the real place. So we con contacted two historians which are famous in this uh, story i mean they written something they got this uh, history background they are also uh, teaching in universities so we get these two historians and uh, give them 30 minutes to narrate about the whole thing so if you want to learn about or if you want to know about adwa you just have to read around 900 pages so we converted that into 30 minutes experience. So there are soldiers, there are shields, there are uh, weapons, there are horses. So all the battlefield, it feels like you are part of the, the battle, but uh, those historians are narrating in a virtual production. So I'm, I will come to the virtual production. Uh, so this is our main area. The reason I mention all of these projects is our involvement depends uh, or our use cases these days depends for the readiness of the metaverse because metaverse is uh, i will come to that in in a minute but uh, we have to get something or we have to do or produce this kind of contents prior to getting directly to the metaverse because that's a collective way of like naming the technology itself but first we have to use it for day-to-day uh, -day or regular uh, activities. So for the virtual production, we partner up with a lot of uh, local partners uh, that does productions and uh, events organization. So we propose that there is a way to do a virtual video production uh, with the power of Unreal Engine, especially we use Unreal Engine for all of our projects. So um, we suggested this uh, and 
luckily we got uh, one potential uh, company uh, that accepted uh, this uh, offer and we did a video uh, that will be a bit long to show to show the video but uh, this is the whole concept uh, so we recreated uh, the 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 background and the scene and the camera movements are done with trackers so it's not that much efficient but we tried experimenting with uh, the equipments that we can get locally uh, i know it's hard especially uh, the sector itself is really expensive so it's not easy to get uh, most of the materials but we tried managing to do it uh, with few items we can get so uh, like i said we are an iot and robotics uh, prototyping company as well i will come to the xr concept why we do hardware and vr together because these two are now connected in the concept of xr uh, we've done uh, different we have a different department called Thanos box that does different robots and uh, these are like uh, these are these are uh, the uh, self-driving robots one is done for uh, the health sector especially to fight covid the second one is for agriculture to fight uh, locust the spread of locust desert locust uh, in ethiopia and we presented that in world bank uh, to i mean uh, to showcase uh, on the digital disruption for agriculture event so we design our own hardwares we come up with uh, localizing or we are trying to see how we can uh, design or produce hardwares and softwares by african so that's our main target so i hope you've seen uh, video booths like this uh, from like abroad it will be in the us you can see it in china you can see it in europe probably you have seen it in nigeria in ethiopia or any other african country but why not designing this device uh, with our own concept so we come up with uh, the whole sketch maybe you can see it on the left side it's in black and white i don't know it's visible but we designed that one and programmed the firmware so we've been doing this kind of activities until we reach to our uh, second project which is uh, v-rider so the v-rider is one of the uh, the base project that we have, especially for VR. As you can see on the, the screen, I tried to put all the process and how uh, they've been like trying to create, set up all the hardwares. But the whole concept of having this device is uh, you just have a bike, uh, an ordinary bike, and we placed our own sensors that can uh, count the rotation of the back wheel, uh, which later on turns it, that data into driving the virtual bike or the virtual uh, vehicle that it gets in vr experience so uh, on the video there is this uh, player wearing the uh, the vr headset so that's our the, through that headset you can add any uh, game or any experience you want so imagine uh, this could be deployed for city of Lagos. So anybody who, who is interested to, to, uh, to have a virtual tour, they can see it through the virtual reality glass. And at the same time, they can also ride the bike physically so that they feel like they are uh, physically there. So uh, I, I think uh, the whole idea of uh, showing all these hardware things is um, as an African, VR is not only about creating contents or uh, diving into this metaverse concept is not only about the contents, the programmings. We have to also master the hardware designs. And as an Africa, maybe, uh, who knows, we might contribute few gaming gadgets to the metaverse world or to the VR games or to the to VR creators. So everybody is engaged in different areas some are uh, working on simulation aviation uh, and some of them especially like our company we focus on tourism uh, and uh, education those are like uh, the good uh, sectors which we are required to focus but uh, some of us should also have some experiments research projects on this metaverse so 
Coming back to this metaverse, I mean, everybody these days knows about the metaverse. It's just to give it like a, with a simple description. It's a simulated digital environment that uses AR or VR, or blockchain, along with the concepts of social media. So a good way to start uh, having the concept of metaverse is uh, uh, the multiplayer version of VR will, I think, explains a bit about metaverse and uh, NFTs will be like a way to own digital assets, digital items in the metaverse. You can also take that as a concept. And before, I mean, we start dive into like the metaverse concept, we need to understand how the internet, the current internet works, especially Web2. So we, we've been seeing 2D versions of internet for the past maybe 20, 30, 40 years. Especially this Web2 is uh, known after the uh, smartphones are introduced to the market. So everybody started chatting, video call, even uh, I'm video, uh, I'm virtually presenting my uh, my speech uh, through Zoom. So it's everything is through multimedia. It could be video, photo, or text. So the 2D versions of websites or uh, internet will be gone. I mean, in any time soon. I don't know when it will, but definitely it will be gone. And the way we experience, the way we engage in the future will be through a virtual presence. So everyone, the headset might change. I mean, it's still it's uh, on development. It's really big, but it might be uh, the size of our glasses. So uh, the concept of virtual presence will be there. So this is the, for me, as of my uh, imagination, this is like the ultimate goal to see the the final metaverse so it's 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 time to upgrade definitely we have to upgrade uh from this uh web to stuff and thinking to the blockchain and xr and all this uh, different technologies and seeing them together and be creative to develop uh, new tools new hardwares so like i said uh when you are virtually presenting in a metaverse the future of NPCs or avatars, we call them avatars. I mean, your avatar will be presenting or will be uh, uh, available or seen in the virtual space. So this uh, avatars, we call them avatars, but you can also call it from the gaming aspect. They, they are called non-playable characters. So these characters are becoming so real. I'm trying just to give you uh, two things. Uh, because I, I feel like it's important to share some of the companies so that you can check them later on. Uh, the first company is uh, near, I mean, I think Star Labs. Uh, Star Labs, it's a company by uh, Pranav Misri. This guy is, uh, he's behind Samsung Watch, Samsung Wear, and uh, Star Labs even backed by Samsung company itself. So, all these uh, people you see on the screen, they are fake. They are generated from AI. So machines created these human beings. So imagine seeing them as a virtual tour guide. Imagine seeing these people in your uh, virtual space or it could be uh, in, uh, let's say, in government offices as a customer desk or support. So basically, there is the technology. Uh, people are doing a lot of amazing stuff they are researching on a lot of uh, areas some some are uh, researching on ai aspect of xr and uh, the others working on the hardware uh, version if you come to unreal engine they come up with uh, i think it was one year ago they announced meta humans so meta humans basically they are I literally human. uh, the next uh, virtual human beings that you can uh, see in the virtual space. So, in the future, you can uh, you can create or uh, you can <laughs> make your previous ancestors come to real life like character. Imagine one of the emperors from Africa uh, will rise uh, again and seen in the metaverse. You can discuss chat, you can ask question or interact so that you feel like you are uh, talking to that avatar or that real person. And if you add a concept of mixed reality, um, 
you you will have that engagement recorded and kept it will be streamed or that experience will be uh, shared to other friends so the way to see this concept is a bit uh, it looks like a fictitious thing but it, it's happening I, 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 if you keep track of all these companies around uh, the world they are doing pre pretty amazing stuff so i mean as an african what's our future uh, one is to know the technology uh, the second one is to have more talents as much as possible because uh, without talents we can't achieve any of this uh, efforts especially uh, to to be part of this metaverse as one will be as a service user so that we will buy their headsets we will buy their games their experience so we don't even contribute some, anything probably for nft artists are now getting more traction but uh, how, how about the rest let's say uh, how about for the developers how about for the tour guides how about for uh, the educators uh, the the pilot you can name each and every job so we have to benefit everyone but for that we first need to understand the technology and uh, we have to collaborate uh, I, I really love uh, like how we African startups are started uh, collaborating on this kind of events and activities because it will help us to uh, uh, create awareness of how this technology will impact uh, the future generation probably we are on the transition but your your future generation your childs will definitely love and they are waiting for this opportunity and we have to give them a chance to be uh, to see them like to make africa uh, the next uh, big continent we have to dominate the digital space we still don't have anything I, I can say i mean especially as an ethiopian we don't manufacture even a calculator that i how i can give my examples i'm not underestimating i know there are a lot of professionals but we have to work on different experiments we have to have products achievable things and collaborations and uh, maybe uh, we have to give this much awareness to uh, the government and also to the investors so that they can be convinced how this technology will help uh, smartphones as you know there are a lot of big companies owning the space and vr if you see the headsets still it's owned by big companies like google facebook or uh, any other european companies that you come up with but why not we building there is aiden vr so we have to encourage we have to see the gap we have to assist so all this kind of collaborative works will definitely help and we don't have to expect anything i mean expectation will kill so the moment we expect uh, we will freeze so what i advise especially uh, to my african colleagues and friends uh, we have to focus on what we can achieve with the tools that we can get and let's try to replicate we know uh, like from abroad and start selling that or start engaging start promoting that kind of technologies because for xr everybody is on the same page uh, in terms of creativity i from what i've seen in france uh, they are good at like designing the game mechanics designing the whole concepts but they are not that much uh, attractive in terms of their contents but if you see africa we have a lot of untold stories untold uh, places uh, cultures so why not sharing that but this time we have to be wise we have to sell it as <laughs> as the standard i mean that meets the standard of the europeans or um, the us or any other developed country so that we earn what we have to earn and uh, we have to collaborate and also teach or share uh, uh, any knowledge any skills that we have I think if there are questions, I will answer. I, I took too much of your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. That was fantastic. Okay, so over to you all. Um,